Hey everyone, wait, let me turn the light on. Um, wow, okay. So, I was reading the Armenian Apocrypha relating to the patriarchs and prophets. I, I don't know, I spent 10 bucks on this PDF. I'll link it below, okay? And, um, okay, let's continue. Um, there is a section of the text called Two Fragments of Adam. Um, the first fragment is another rendition of Adam's words onto Seth. Now, I made an audiobook of that. We covered that. Um, that proves to be prophetic. But, but that version of the fragment isn't necessarily... I don't think it's a genuine... I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's inspired. So I was just reading the second fragment and um, it actually confirms, which I believe something I was reading in the Cave of Treasures today. Um, I probably should have brought up the scripture. You know what? I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to do that really quick. Okay, we're back. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so let's check out the second fragment. It's very short. Okay. Um, here we go. And Adam lived 830 years. We know he lived 930 years, but that doesn't mean the text is not valid. Um, numbers, you know, we have to use the sermon. Um, numbers and times and calendars can be different. Lost to thousands of years. whoop de doo It's not a reason to throw away a text. Um, okay, so Adam lived 830 years. For during a hundred years he drew pains on account of the longings, the desire of the garden which came to his mind. His whole, Adam's whole life, he just wanted to eat from the tree of life again. He wanted to feel what he felt before the fall. Okay? Um, I read, I finally finished that entire book, The Lives of Adam and Eve Collection. I've read the Arminian Book of Adam as well. Excellent text. Okay, excellent. So, and all these texts about Adam confirm what this is saying. Like his whole life, um, he was just longing to eat from the fruit, the tree of life. Um, okay, so his soul did not depart. He remembered the sweetness and the, let me zoom on, on here we go. <clears throat> okay. He remembered the sweetness and the, and the delight of the garden. He was ter terrified and afraid of the bitter hell to whom he had given his contract. On account of that, his soul did not depart until his son Seth for forty days fasted, had abstained from food, and entreated God with prayer that he would take his father's soul. Okay, this is also in all the Adamic literature. Seth fasted for forty days for his father, um, in hoping that and hoping that God would be merciful and, and give Adam his, his uh, glorified state again, give him t from the, uh, to eat from the tree of life. But according to the text that I've read, all the Adamic literature, that's when the archangel came to Seth and told him about the redemption. Say, no, you guys have to live your time out, and in 5,000 years, Christ will come, etc. Then the merciful God sent the archangel Michael to Seth on fiery wings, he went to the garden of Adam, and Seth, having brought fruit from the garden, gave it to his father. Okay, so all the other texts never say that Seth um, obtained that fruit. So there's a, I don't want to use the word discrepancy, okay? Um, I'm not saying all these Adamic texts are, okay, this is the gospel truth, but I believe they're, they are uh, foundational on truth. Um, the foundation of those texts is on truth. So, <clears throat> okay. So details could get mixed up in time and all that stuff. But this is why we study and we, and we read and we can discern. But I'm sharing this because I'm finding truth of what I read in the cable. Hang on. I'll show you. This is pretty cool. And Seth, having brought him fruit from the garden, gave it to his father. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't recall reading that Seth ever obtained the fruit from the tree of life. Um, 
And when he had eaten of the fruit of the garden, then he gave up his soul. So Adam died when he finally ate of the fruit of the garden. Um, this is possible. The other texts don't say that happened. But it doesn't mean it didn't. But I'm taking this seriously because, hold on. And taking this branch of whose fruit Adam had eaten, they brought it to Adam's grave and planted it above the head of Adam's tomb. Now, where was Adam buried? Adam was buried at Golgotha, okay, by angelic power, okay? The he um, Golgotha, where our Lord was crucified, where that church of Calvary is, where the garden tomb is, okay, that is the center of the earth. What does it mean as the center of the earth? We're told when the earth was created, the spirits, um, the earth, the four corners of the earth um, grew out and were drawing to each other and they all came together where Golgotha is forming a cross okay that's what we're told and when Adam died um, Noah brought Adam's body on the ark and the angels helped Noah bury Adam they literally supernaturally opened up the earth and put Adam in the cave of treasures in Golgotha where Ram Wyatt found the ark of the covenant Adam's body is in there somewhere um, protected by supernatural you know so they're saying um, the fruit from the tree of life or maybe it's this branch that he received from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that's that from Adam's words maybe that's it but they planted that on top of where Adam was buried at his head which is the authority all right Golgotha is what a skull okay authority representing because that is where the head of the serpent is crushed where our Lord was crucified um, so this text is saying they planted a tree there or they planted that branch there on top of Adam's body where his head would be and it grew into a tree now here we go and taking this branch of whose fruit Adam, Adam had eaten they brought it to Adam's grave and planted it above the head of Adam's tomb it became a great tree. The doctors say, okay, this is the, uh, the doctors, the, you know, whatever, or the rabbis or whoever. The doctors say that Christ was crucified on the wood of this tree. He who carried out salvation and mercy for Adam and for all his offspring, whom he let God redeem and save from bitter hell. Okay. The doctors say that Christ was crucified from the wood of that tree. Now, when we review the traditional manuscript of Adam's words onto Seth, you know, I made the audiobook of this. A lot of people saw this. That is an inspired, revelatory, prophetic text. Okay? And we give, and it's offensive to a lot of people because it's like, wait, Seth gave Adam a branch from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Seth says, where came death, there came light. And what that means is, is our good nature versus our bad nature we have the thief on the left hand of the cross on the left side of the cross who mocked jesus and the thief who accepted jesus on the right hand of the cross representing our good nature and our bad nature and jesus what we make our eye be single and brings that together as written in ephesians as well he is the middle cross okay um so whether this branch is from the tree of life or from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we could debate about that. But the point is, the doctors say, so a huge tree grew out of that branch that they buried on top of Adam's body, where his head would be. The doctors say that that, doctors say that Christ was crucified in the wood of this tree. Now, what do they mean by that? This is a little bit watered down. Let's look at the book of Cave of Treasures. All right, here we are in the book of Cave of Treasures, the chapter of the birth of Isaac, and it's telling us all about Golgotha, okay? Um, I will copy and paste this in the link below, but the point that's important here is at Golgotha, it's saying all the things that happened at Golgotha. There too, Abraham took up Isaac, his son, for a burnt offering, and he saw the cross of Christ and the redemption of our father Adam, the tree or the thicket was a symbol of the cross of Christ 
our Lord, and the ram caught in its branches was the mystery of the manhood of the Word, the only one. So, this is going back to Genesis, what is it, 15 or something? Or, I, I forget, I'm butchering the number. But when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, there was a ram caught in the thicket, okay? Caught in his horns by a thicket. That is a representation of Christ being crucified. He was caught, caught in the thicket by his authority, his double authority. And he was in the branches. What are branches? Look at Psalm 1. The fruit of the word, the mystery of the word, which the, exactly what it says. And its branches was the mystery of the manhood of the word. The only one. And what does John 1 say? He grew into his own, and his own received him not. Okay, are you following me? So, when we look at this text that the doctors say that Christ was crucified on the wood of this tree, they're probably really referring to that is the tree that the ram was caught in the thicket, which was a representation of the crucifixion. This is like a touch watered down, but they're on the... That's what it's talking about. So there's some truth here. Really cool, really amazing. Wow. So, I think we could discern this as something that probably happened. Wow. Amazing. Alright guys, um, I'll leave this stuff in the description box below. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I pray people can receive this. Um, okay, I'll put it all in the description box below. Thanks.